Welcome to the channel English Grammar and Composition. I am Dr. B. K. Jha. Today I am going to tell you about etymology, Hindi meaning Sabd Vichar. Etymology is also called parts of a speech. So, the day before yesterday, I have discussed about orthography, which has uh, alphabet and alphabet is of two types one is vowel another one is consonant i have also referred there a e i o u is vowel and rest 19 alphabet 19 letter is consonant so actually Basic grammar is very easy and you do not need to read a voluminous book but to just get basic things about the English. Basically etymology is nothing but it has derived certain letters from orthography which makes word and uh, that word makes some meaning which is uh, spoken by moth so that is what uh, here we have etymology uh, called parts of a speech I have uh, taken help from internet where the concept is not very clear. However, I will give you three, four examples which I have seen in uh, Google. So the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history. Basically, this definition is not of etymology. Actually, this refers us to the meaning of words, how it has been changed over the period of time. So, next one is the origin of a word and the historical development of its meaning and uh, its uh, plural is etymologies the etymology of the word devil. There are so many uh, things which is rubbish I found them in internet. But in Hindi we have very clear uh, thing to go with. Vidpati विपत्ति के विचार से संज्ञा के ही तीन भेद होते हैं रूढ़ योगिक एंड योग रूढ़ी सो एक्चुअली आई माय सेल्फ डू नॉट नो मच अबाउट विपत्ति व्हाट इज योग एंड देन बनावट के विचार से संज्ञा के ही पांच भेद होते हैं दैट इज संज्ञा सर्वनाम विशेषण क्रिया और आदि but I mean to focus on English grammar. So there are eight parts of a speech in English grammar. So looking at the word parts of a speech, whatever we speak from moth. Uh, irrespective of the fact whether we understand that sound or not, but that may be a word. So that fall under the head etymology or you can say parts of a speech. Let us see uh, further what is the definition of an etymology. An explanation of where a word came from, the history of a word according to its etymology the english word dope comes from the dutch word dope which means sauce several different etymology have been proposed 
So actually we are not going to dig the root of the word uh, from where that word has come, uh, whether uh, the word has uh, come from Germany or America, England, Spain or French. Basically we want to improve our language skill uh, so that we could be able to work uh, with the language in our day to day life. The next definition as per internet, the study of word history and expert in etymology. And uh, we hardly uh, have object of uh, to be called expert. So these are not a very useful definition for the learner. So actually I have developed three uh, small paragraph to understand etymology. So these you can say are very important tips to remember. First is etymology deals with words placed before us by orthography and science us. Science us means points us towards the parts of a speech. Etymology deals with words and orthography later when combined together make some sort of word which has meaning and sometimes uh, has no meaning. So we do not bother about whether later when combined together makes meaning or not makes meaning. Actually our focus is on word which is a sound and we make sound when we speak. Let us see second. To understand etymology is to understand word. To understand etymology is to understand word or words being spoken by us. Uh, we can speak various language and our focus is on spoken words whether that is English, Hindi or any other language. Any human beings and animals, the words the sound uh, can be spoken by human beings. Even animals can produce sound. Because it relates to sound which has some sort of meaning irrespective of the fact we understand and sometimes we fail to understand. So actually parts of a speech is related now our third paragraph is keeping in view the above two points. First point is given by, given before us by orthography and second point is given to us by human beings, by animals, by birds. So they are also producing song and sound must be a word. So the final paragraph is keeping in view the above two points which are relevant in the context of etymology tells us about the word or words which is being spoken by us in any shape and size through mouth with the help of sound. So I think the sound being spoken by us through mouth is word. So these three paragraphs is relevant in the context. Now we come down to parts of a speech which represents etymology. So in summary all words are divided into eight different kinds and they are called part of speech. 
They are as follows: noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. So, in short, we shall go through the head noun and its definition, and we will try to understand it. Ah, what is what? So, definition of noun. A noun is the name of person, place, or thing. It's very old definition. It includes animal, human, quality, idea, feeling, and experience. So, these are the things which compel us to produce noun. A noun is a word which is used as the name of anything, uh, whatever new thing. Now we find, we try to understand it through name. We ask, what is the name of the thing? So, for example, in person, Ram, Doctor, Kaur, Mohan, Syam, in places, Delhi, New Delhi, playground, New Delhi, and things we have: pen, scale, football, water, book, pencil, blade, cutter, sharpener, many things we have in hand to understand this. Now let us go to pronoun. Pronoun is a word which is used in place of noun. Uh, actually, basically, pronoun is very short, and we should understand that uh, it is used in place of noun. Actually, it starts with I. Similar. We plural. You, singular, you, plural, he, she, it, and its plural is there. So actually whatever words are being used to replace these eight words are called pronoun. So actually noun and pronoun both are very limited until and unless we expand it to make it complex. For the beginners, it is enough to know how and which word could replace these eight words. Let us talk about uh, adjective, definition of adjective. An adjective is a word which qualifies a noun or a pronoun. Next one is an adjective is a word which adds something to the meaning of a noun or pronoun. For example, intelligent student, uh, actually a student is known, intelligent is adjective uh, which has come before a student. It is not necessary that noun should come to use uh, adjective words. It's a plural. We are intelligent students. Here to comes intelligent before a students. You are a doctor. Here doctor is adjective. Experience. All the third form of the verb. Ah, must be under adjective. Even third form of verb are adjective. Excellent, volleyball, good, smart. So these are the words in <coughs> short we must understand that adjective is a word which tells something about noun or pronoun by keeping its relation with noun. Suppose shirt. This shirt is red. So red and shirt has a relation which can't be separated. So if we could separate the adjective from the noun, then the meaning will come. Ah, different. Now we shall discuss about verb. 
a verb is a word which denotes an action, state, or possession. So actually, if we understand what is action, what is state, what is possession, uh, we easily come to understand uh, tense. A verb is a word which says something about subject. Uh, just taking for an example, Ram eats a mango. So who eats a mango? Ram. So verb eating refers to subject Ram. The next one is the main outcome of this definition is denoted possession, relation, state, and condition. So actually, we know what is verb, but we fail to use it when we start speaking English. Action, runs, walking, moves. Denoting, I have a car, I have a car. And for relation, King Dasrath had three queens. Again, possession, he has knowledge of English. And they will play. So state and condition, state, I am ready, he was a sent condition, they have big horse. So actually, verb is too easy and we always remember, uh, let us go further, when the verb will come, then we shall discuss it more elaborately. So in this video, I, we have noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, just to make it short. Uh, I have finished it on verb. And in our next video, we shall discuss about adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. Actually, these five uh, types of parts of speech are very important as we have in Hindi, Sangya, Sarvanam, Visheshan, Kriya, or Abhya. Actually, what is meaning Abhya? I fail to understand, but I guess that adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection are there with in the word Abhya. So actually, we have a separate uh, chapter that is called Case to replace preposition, conjunction, or interjection, but there is very uh, thin correlation between case and uh, preposition. So actually I want to finish here.